Welcome to Under the Sun. This month, we'll talk about digital economy and natural resources. With the first EG8 just closing its door and governments developing strategy to develop this sector, one can wonder about digital economy and natural resources. Natural resources which are the best on which digital economy is growing with electronic goods such as PCs, data storage, servers. We're happy to receive Mrs. Either Critch from the International Institute for Sustainable Development to explore digital economy and information and communication technologies called ICTs and more particularly the link it holds with natural resources in the first part. And in the second part, Mr. Alfred Musucili from Colaf, an Irish NGO, to address concrete policies arisen from the search for natural resources, that is to support growth in the digital economy. Would you please uh, introduce yourself and your organization? Uh, well, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Heather Creech. I'm the Director of Global Connectivity at the International Institute for Sustainable Development. IISD is uh, an international organization with our headquarters in Canada. Uh, we also work out of New York and Geneva. Uh, we are a policy research and communications group, and we try to address the major leverage points in sustainable development. So I and my colleagues work on uh, trade and investment, we work on subsidies, we work on climate change, energy, and in my particular uh, domain, I'm looking now at uh, issues around uh, internet infrastructure, telecommunications, IT, policy and implementation as, again, as a, a, a leverage issue for sustainability. Okay, how long have you been uh, exploring this subject particularly? Uh, on the policy side, we this is a fairly new area for us, so we have been working fairly uh, more intensively on it over the last three years. I've been at IISD for about 18 years now. Um, uh, uh, I think the, the story is, is interesting. Uh, I joined to build IISD's information services, but over the years we've come to realize that it's not just about um, building capacity to use technology. There are some major policy issues around technology itself mm -hmm. that warrant uh, exploration and attention. So that's taken us very much more into policy and governance around information technology. Okay, good. So you're the good person to contact to know a bit more about the link between digital, digital economy and natural resources then. Uh, well, thank, but, I, but I'm also a bit of a figurehead for a team of uh, very bright people uh, who, who I have the, the real honor to work with. So <laughs> they brief me well on this. <laughs> Okay, so first to start, would you please explain what is what is digital economy and the role of information and communication technologies in our society? Sure. Um, the the term digital economy really emerged in the, the 1990s with the the uh, the, the dot com uh, boom taking off, and it was really uh, trying to. Um, explore how information technology, uh, information communications technology, um, was becoming very much an important component of economic development. Um, more recently, we've seen a, a much more sophisticated and broader understanding of the digital economy, which really looks at the full range, not just at the, the IT industry, but it looks at everything from the, the technology, the manufacturing of, of, of goods and products. It also looks at the infrastructure, the, the fiber optic cables that, that bind us together, the wireless networks, mm -hmm. and finally at the content and services that are being delivered. And it's that convergence and intersection of all of that that is now more, more broadly being understood to be the digital economy, 
or the internet economy is the other phrase that, that's, that's starting to be used. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of maybe important points to, to flag. First of all, in understanding the digital economy, what's fresh and new is this understanding that everyone has a role and a responsibility in this. The Australians actually did quite an interesting um, job in defining their digital economy strategy, mm -hmm. where they actually broke out what is the role of government, what is the role of industry, but also what are the roles and expectations and benefits to communities mm -hmm. uh, and to individuals. And I think this is this is what's new in this emerging sector, is this real recognition that everybody's got a stake Everybody's got a role, everybody benefits, but everybody also has a responsibility. And I think the other main point to, to flag is the size of this sector. Um, this is still growing, and I think it's only very recently that, that some of the heavy lifting is being done now on the real economic analysis of this. And as part of the G8 meeting, so just a few weeks ago, McKinsey mm -hmm. released a, a report that's been making considerable waves, where with their analysis, they, they now calculate that, that just on the e-commerce side of the digital economy, just, just cash changing hands for electronic, uh, electronically for goods and services, that amounts to $8 trillion a year. And if you look at an overall sort of global economy running at about you know, 50, 60 trillion a year, that's a significant um, percentage of, of overall commerce. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other point that they make, they now look at this, this if you were to consider expenditures and consumption of, of uh, internet goods and services mm -hmm. as a sector, the contribution of that sector to GDP is now, um, as a percentage of GDP, is now greater than either the agriculture sector as a whole mm -hmm. or globally the energy sector as a whole. So this is huge, and, and I think that we're only just beginning to appreciate the significant impacts of it. The World Bank's um, done a lot of work on developing countries, and mm -hmm. some of their, their data is, is reinforces this. They found that just on broadband penetration, 10% yes. uh, increase in, in broadband access in developing countries accelerates growth by about a point and a half percentage. So, you know, and that's just, you know, 10% and you get 1.5% growth, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. Okay, so this sector holds more and more place in, uh, in our society and in, and in our economy. So in that, what place those um, old natural resources in uh, information and communication te technologies? Well, this is, this is becoming the, the emerging question is, you know, is this um, uh, contributing to a green economy or is this simply perpetuating the same problems of resource uh, extraction, degradation, environ negative environmental impacts and so on? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is the digital economy green? Uh, and I think there's some major issues there that, again, we're, we're only starting to, to um, understand. Um, Can you explain what does mean green when we say is the digital economy green for the audience? Um, I think it's the digital economy um, contributing positively or negatively to environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. So the, when people talk about the green economy, they talk about a resilient economy that provides a better quality of life within the limits of the planet. Okay. So if you look at the digital economy, is the digital economy contributing to that, or is it in fact uh, helping uh, us uh, to go in a different direction, that it's actually continuing to support um, our, our excess use of ecological resources? Mm -hmm. So I think with, with you know certainly one of the one of the main issues with with ICT and the digital economy is is energy 
um, use that goes into ICD production and use, and the other is the, the material um, um, uh, consumption, the resources that have to be mined to go into the production of, mm -hmm. of computers and handsets and cables and, and so on. Can um, you give, can and, and the issue here has to do in part with the scarcity of the rare metals mm -hmm. that go into um, electronics. Uh, modern electronics can contain up to 60 different uh, elements of uh, palladium, tantalum, platinum, copper, gold, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the extraction of these is difficult um, and, uh, and significant. The, the use of water, the degradation done to land, and so on is, is enormous. Now these are all uh, kind of well understood in the, in the mining context. So anyone who works on mining and sustainable development is, is very familiar with this. Mm -hmm. But people who are working on, on ICT yes. don't necessarily take into consideration the resource extraction problems that go into the, mm -hmm. the production of ICTs. So that's an issue. Um, let me give you an example. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, uh, a chip within uh, a, a computer mm -hmm. might weigh uh, a gram and that gram the production of the, the, the metal that goes into that chip mm -hmm. even just at one gram um, that's the result of one ton of uh, carbon emissions Mm -hmm. So a single gram of a rare metal inside your laptop has already caused a thousand tons of greenhouse gases to be emitted. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, the, the carbon footprint of a laptop, just in the manufacturing and the actual energy that that laptop uses, the emissions from the energy that that laptop uses over its lifespan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're already in debt, basically, by the time we bought the computer. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, the, you know, the huge problem in this is, is the quantity. The lifespan of a single laptop is now about two years. Yes, it is. It has decreased yeah. over the years. Yeah. So this, this just gets uh, perpetuated. Okay, so uh, um, from your experience or the, poli the, the, the subject we are working on, um, how to conciliate uh, growth in the digital economy? As you said, it's all more and more place in our GPD and uh, in our consumption with natural resources who are finite. Well, this is, yeah, I mean, this is the, the, the real question. Um, there are some real positive benefits that um, ICTs can and will bring mm -hmm. to uh, the management of the environment. And I think where the hard work needs to be done is how do you balance the benefit that they bring against the environmental footprint that they carry. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the benefits, um, ICTs, electronics, uh, and the and telecommunication systems are an absolute critical component of smart technology. So smart power, um, uh, smart water management, mm -hmm. where you are managing demand side infinitely more in a more sophisticated way. Um, you know, by wiring up your house and your office and your car so mm -hmm. that you get to much greater energy efficiencies by, by being able to track your use and electronics are, are an integral component to that. Well, are the, you know, the, the work that needs to be done is to figure out whether the gains from smart technology, reducing uh, carbon, um, better use of other resources mm -hmm. offset the loss from the creation of the electronics in the first place. 
So that's a big question, and, and you know, the work really hasn't been done uh, to explore that with, with any degree of sophistication. Uh, I think the other um, challenge is to look at the, what you would call the indirect or, or second order or third order um, effects of, of uh, the digital economy, mm -hmm. and that's on the content and services that they support. Um, dematerialization, for example, telecommuting, um, where again you get this downstream environmental benefit mm -hmm. through uh, a more sensible and practical use of technology. Um, and also then the, the changes in, in the kinds of um, um, uh, sources of, of our, our generation of revenues, you know, moving to a service economy, moving to an entertainment economy, mm -hmm. you know, the growth of the gaming uh, sector. Um, it's really interesting when you look at um, uh, generally the, the, the numbers of, of jobs that are created there, mm -hmm. largely just for, for entertainment, but it has real value, it creates jobs, income, and so on, and that, that has a real benefit. But then there's also the use of, of um, the information that's carried through websites and, and other services that help you know your average consumer to make more informed choices about what they what they buy and how they want to live their lives and so on. It also has an economic benefit. So how do you you know what's the what's the balancing here? Um, can we lower our global footprint mm -hmm. by increasing a little bit some of the, the issues around resource um, extraction and use and the creation of the digital economy in the first place. Thank you. And on, on, on that note, I read uh, an article from Anne's report that was um, discussing the, um, a report from the Sustainable Development Committee in uh, the UK. Um, that was called Prosperity Without Growth. And it was interesting in the sense that um, it were considering uh, ICTs and digital economy and the fact that, um, as you said, uh, we have to take into consideration natural resources and, and the fact that ICT sometimes make us consume and, and, and use Uh, more energy and was talking about the rebound effects that may come into play. The thing that yes with ICT we can manage better our resources but the um, diminution of the car carbon footprint we, we allocated elsewhere and increase our consumption elsewhere. Like you were referring to the, the gaming industry, yes, there, there is economic benefit, it creates jobs and everything, but more people stay in line to play, um, to play a casino online, for example. Can you comment, comment on that? Well, um, maybe just one component of that, which is just on the straight energy Mm -hmm. use involved. Um, I mean, there's no question the, the energy consumption coming out of the ICT sector um, is increasing and the, the carbon emissions from that are also increasing. Mm -hmm. um, they're now uh, somewhere at or beyond the emissions coming out of the airline sector, for example. But I think what's interesting is that Um, much of those emissions are coming from the growth in data centers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the trend that we will see is as data centers grow, they're also starting to really take the energy challenge quite seriously. The emissions are largely coming from cooling the data centers because yes. the, the large uh, computer systems um, create uh, considerable amounts of heat And so they, they need to be kept fairly cool in order to, to keep them all down, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the companies like Google and Cisco and others are looking very seriously at um, 
how to set up data centers near sources of renewable energy yes. to reduce this carbon footprint of the data center itself. And Google's actually um, really quite interested in moving into the energy sector, renewable energy sector, because they see this as a, a really a sort of a symbiotic relationship between continuing to build their data centers and having good green power to operate them. So one of the drivers for green power may actually start coming from the ICT sector itself because they're becoming the, the really significant demanders for that. Okay, and you were talking about the, the corporate responsibility that Google has and, and that's why they are exploring new ways to power their um, data center. But what about the citizen responsibility? Do we have to change our habits when considering internet or the use of uh, uh, electronic goods? Absolutely, and, and I think this, this is uh, something where a lot more work needs to be done. Um, I think we need, there needs to be a, a bit of a culture shift um, to maintaining our electronics for longer periods of time mm -hmm. rather than constantly turning them over every time a new toy comes onto the market, you know, the, the bright new handset or the, the new um, uh, um, MP3 player or the latest in a tablet. Um, this is a this is a real challenge here, and some of that comes down to consumer choice and consumer awareness and responsibility. But some of it also comes back to the companies themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a real issue around tethering the technology to a particular line of products. So, for example, you have Amazon's Kindle. Well, you can only use the Kindle to buy books from Amazon. If you want to buy electronic books from Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. you have to then buy Barnes and Noble's e-reader. Mm -hmm. And the negotiation of electronic rights with publishers is is quite complex and, and you end up with a case where you've got a consumer who might end up with two or three different e-readers mm -hmm. when in fact if we went about this more both strategically and responsibly, You know, maybe we really only need one e-reader that accesses all available um, uh, uh, books and so on um, mm -hmm. for which there are electronic rights. So there are a couple of different issues there. There's still a corporate responsibility challenge, I think, for the IT sector to um, uh, help consumers uh, reduce the the demand for new products every six months or so. Okay, thank you. And we are talking um, before about uh, rare earth material and all the, 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 the mining products that uh, enter the cycle of production of uh, electronic goods. Um, can there be tension arisen um, for those rare earths? material that we know are finite and limited, limited on Earth? Um, yeah, I, I think there's a, I mean, it's, it's been well documented that mm -hmm. um, spikes in the price of some of these, these rare metals have led to conflict in places like the Congo. Mm -hmm. um, where the value of the commodity goes up because it's been stockpiled by a company to ensure that there, there's enough available for producing things like a new launch of the PlayStation or the Wii. Um, and uh, when you stockpile a commodity, mm -hmm. uh, then that drives the price up and then you've got situations where um, opportunistic developers go into uh, a country and and create conflict over trying to extract that resource illegally. Mm -hmm. So this, there's no question that, that this is an issue. And there is some, will we see more of this? Um, the several minerals, there are some questions about whether we are already at 
um, the, the sort of peak availability of them, and is that you know, are we flirting with critical levels on some of these, like like tantalum, like um, cobalt, uh, like platinum, palladium? Um, we don't know. I mean, this is um, you know, obviously a lot more um, geological survey being mm-hmm. done to find sources of these kinds of metals. So whether there are more undiscovered sources out there or not, nevertheless, some of these are getting to, to critical levels. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these are located in less developed countries. Yes. Um, where there aren't some of the, the protections and safeguards over, over good mining practices and fair distribution of the wealth coming from those mines. Yes. So it's a, it's a problem. And what will be the solution if we want to keep uh, the IT sector to grow? If, because it's, it's becoming a priority in many governments. A lot of governments um, uh, have uh, put in place uh, IT and digital economy strategy. If these resources is finished, if there's already tension, and maybe we did reach the peak of resources that are available, What would be the solution to continue? Or do we have to stop at some point? Yeah. I, well, I, one of the challenges always in, in, in governments is, is the, the creation of silos of responsibility. Mm-hmm. And, and inevitably, you know, you have situations where you're promoting real growth in, in something like the digital economy without having gone you know, sort of across the hall to talk to the people in the natural resources department mm-hmm. about what some of the impacts might be even within a country or they haven't gone down the hall to talk with their export trade uh, departments to talk about, um, well, where are some of their critical supplies going to come from in the future. Mm-hmm. So it's the ongoing challenge of, of work across departments and across interests at, at the national level and at the international level. Um, you know, the, the mining sector as a whole, groups like the International Council for Mines and mm-hmm. Minerals, um, International Bar Association, even my, my, my own colleagues, have done a fair amount of work around model mining agreements mm-hmm. that really look into social licenses to operate, that really try to deal with effective um, uh, safeguards and protections for, for responsible mining. Um, but I think there needs to be more work done on the IT industry side mm-hmm. to ensure that within their supply chains, their sources of these metals are coming from mines that that are operating in a responsible fashion. So I think that's that's one issue that, that some of the onus is on governments to to get their signals right across their own between their own departments. The second comes to the industry itself to take a much closer look at their own supply chains. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Critch, for participating to the program. Well, I, it was it was my pleasure. Um, it's it's always uh, fantastic to be able to talk about some of these these big issues of the day. <laughs> thank you.